year ago, uh, when Cloud on VP of Product, Jay Zavari, spoke in the LibreOffice conference, he shared a uh, common belief. He, sorry, he talked about Cloud on solution for personal and group productivity. In his talk, he also shared a common belief about mobile devices, something we like to call the assumption of consumption. And when we say the assumption of consumption, we mean that in 2010 and 11, most if not all reports and surveys from different researchers and enterprises are all indicating that mobile devices are mainly being used to consume information, consuming not creating from playing games, listening to music, to reading, browsing, sharing on social media. And the more people were buying iPads, more apps were created to accommodate these trends. But we at CloudOn were busy doing something a little different. We want to leverage the fact that people are mobile with their devices and to provide them with such a tool that is focused on editing and creating. Now many question this, uh, this path, especially in early 2012. But as we quickly learned, right after we launched, the assumption of consumption was not, was not completely true. We launched in early 2012. We provided a full Microsoft Office suite for mobile devices. And just a few days after, we were number one in the App Store for all categories for more than 10 days. Not only outranking pages, the most common editing tool at that time, but also outranking all cool games like Temple One, which I still play. So what we, we kind of learned from this that people were creating and editing documents and there was a demand for such a product. It showed there is a gap between those assumptions to a real need. People from all range of industries were, were owning a top, an iPad without the ability to access their, their content and edit it. Reporters were reaching out to us. Uh, we had TechCrunch tech articles being reported, you name it. It's interesting. It was an interesting time. But what happened? Why Cloud On? Why it was different? First of all, our app was free, which is always great. It was open in a sense, people could choose their favorite store provider where they can store their documents. Uh, by doing so, by the way, more than 600,000 Dropbox accounts were created using the cloud. We were also compatible, uh, which has kind of addressed the legacy issue. We know today there is more than 80 billion documents sitting on enterprises. You can only assume how hard it is to start exporting and importing them for different formats. And even the way we did it was a bit different. Our technology approach was to put application on the cloud and service it, just like you would put, with your, you put your files on, on the cloud. And when we saw the growing market of iPads, we decided to service them. And where, where better to start with something as simple as Microsoft Office? Or so we thought. We put Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, even add up Adobe Reader, hooked it up with the most common storage providers. And here you go, Office on iPads. Amazing, right? Depends on how you look at it. From a technology point of view, it was amazing. We were able to eliminate or hide the OS behind the app and provide clean apps. We even learned the Microsoft toolbar called Ribbon X, which is give Microsoft the credit of this uh, great name. Um, we did it so we can redesign it. It was built for a mouse. And given for a touch screen, we needed to make those buttons bigger, bigger, big enough for a tap, for a finger tap. 
Not only that the toolbar was built for a mouse, moving around the documents was, was also built for a mouse. Scrolling the document and, and moving around, we need to map all the touch events to a mouse clicks. It was, this was an easy, uh, easy task to do. We spent so much time to build a wrapper around this app. And I think only then we really understood how complex are these kind of tools. This was working for iPhone, iPad, Android phones, desktop, from iOS OS, the Android, and, and PCs. Was it also interesting to see how how it was diff how people use it differently depending on the device, depending on the phone factor. For example, on phone, one of the most used feature features was creating list. Now I wouldn't I'm not sure Cloud is the best note taking app, but it definitely showed that open, to be able to store it in your, on your storage provider, and the compatibility was very important to people. Three years after, we're standing with 7.5 unique million users, 700,000 monthly app returning users. More than 80 million documents were opened for viewing and editing with Cloud On, and more than 7 million new documents were created using Cloud On. We counted more than 1 billion events and action on these documents. And after looking at these numbers, we really believe we could have done much better. Because if you look at it from the user point of view, we didn't really give a good experience. If you would imagine the tablet as this cool modern city where everything is fast and responsive, full with gadget and innovation, and what we did, we put a tractor inside, a massive tractor to people to move around. Yeah, it works, you can move around, but does it fit? We start hearing users complaining about, uh, about, about the app, which is not a bad thing to have. People are using it. If they're reaching out to us, that's a good thing. They were complaining how slow it is. And since our technology was to stream video and many of those devices were running on 3G or places with low internet, uh, this result with a significantly, significantly lag. Uh, people also complaining about the gestures not working as expected. Scrolling, pinching in and out. There is so much you can do with mapping it to mouse clicks. Users also start complaining how, about the toolbar itself being too complex or too cluttered. Might, might have functions they don't really use or need, especially on mobile. After that, there was an incoming stream of a feature request, which is even a better problem to have. People want more of your device. One of them is offline. Users wanted to work offline. And of course, we couldn't support it with, the, with our uh, technology approach of streaming live video. Can, can buffer, can do anything with that. Users wanted to print, which we were able, actually able to, to accomplish by building this bridge or a pipe between the service and the client. Images. A lot of people have a lot of photos on their devices. But in our technology approach, they couldn't put them in the documents because documents were all flo floating around the cloud. So we start thinking. We started thinking, how can we address user complaints and requests? We see this crazy demand for a mobile editor. But with our current technology, not that, that, that tool did not even match our own expectation, nevertheless the user wants. As a result, we decided to change direction, um, to build something in these three years, we accumulated a lot of information 
a lot of data and a lot of experience. We know how people use an office suite on mobile. We know what they're trying to do. We know where do they struggle. The pain they're going through and the pain they're going through to complete the task. We wanted to build a tool that user will choose to use. A tool that is not only better than our current app, it also better than the competitors. This, by the way, this is our new tool. Sorry. Also better than our competitors. And even on the go, maybe more accessible than pulling up your own laptops. So we end up uh, building this. Sorry if it looked like a little promotion for Cloud On, <laughs> which it is. But um, even if we're not, maybe still, maybe we're not there yet. And I'll share where we are right now in a, few, in a few slides. This is the direction we want to talk about. And we'll talk about the gesture experience, the user experience of a new editing tool that is a little different. But changing this approach. To build such an editor, to build a native app, first we embraced LibreOffice as the foundation of this new editor. We built a super intelligent engine layer on top and a gesture experience above it. And when I say gesture experience, I'm not saying mobile as you probably have heard before, mobile first is trans. I'm saying we'll build a gesture, edit, no, not just a mobile experience, we're building a gesture experience. And, by, and to take this approach, there's three pillars that guide us through. First of all, the simplicity of the app. The, second, the ability to move around object, to grab and move around object. And third, remembering the basics that, that brought us here. Following these pillars, make sure that the choices we make are to serve a purpose of speed and fun. We, started with, we want to start with a clean sheet, not to take with us any legacy constraint from the past. So we could offer the right stuff to be struggle-free, to give more real estate, to reduce clutter, and choose the right amount of functionality. Let's look at some examples. In an editor, there's many two modes the user is in, either reading or writing. And for each mode, don't you want the most of your, of your device? Shouldn't you prefer to have a focused experience? Now, when reading, why clutter the screen with 
tool parts and elements that are not needed at that point. It's not that hard to know when you're reading or writing. There's a keyboard. This is Pages, Microsoft Office on, on iPad, Google Docs. The toolbar that you can see here is a significantly percentage of the screen that, why is it there? Cloudland, we're trying to add something called context awareness. Only bring what you need when you need it. This is an example of almost 100% of the screen is for you or for the user or for the people to use. We know how hard it is to create beautiful documents. How do one font work with another? When to bold and when to italic? Uh, what about line spacing and or choosing the right colors? Our design team handpicked a set of, set of styles that works together. So when you start creating a document with Cloud On, you're already one step ahead. A few weeks ago, I was babysitting my nephew, Daniel, and he didn't want to go to sleep, he want to keep playing, as the responsible that I am, I told him that he won't always get what he wanted, he needs to go to sleep. In reply, by, by, does that mean I will get something I don't want? But that's a kid, of course, he's a kid thinking he's the center of everything. But the question itself is interesting in a little different way. Like, will I get something I don't want? Is this what also happening with other tools like ours and, and, and other tools? Are we, giving, are we giving users features and capabilities they don't really need or want, and by doing so, adding complexity to these tools? This is a nice quote. Make things as simple as possible, but not simpler. Someone who actually lived in Paris said it. Uh, if you want to guess, we'll share in a second. Choosing the right functionality is one of the most hardest and challenging things we had to do in the last few months. To give to the user not more than what they need. You see that. The, the rule of 80-20 does not apply from what we learned on Microsoft Office. It is more like 90-10. 90% of the users are using 10% of the functionality. Now this is true to mobile devices. It was Albert Einstein, by the way. He lived in Berlin. It's an anecdote for those of you. I didn't know that until last night. <laughs> So, let's look at some examples. The toolbar, for example. We put the most common functions on the toolbar in the form of shortcuts. No more dialog after dialog after dialog, sorry. No more dialog after dialog after dialog. Everything you need is just one tap away. You don't need to remember that Alco Control 7 is doing this and Alco Control 8 is doing that. One tap away. That's our goal. We want to organize functionality in a powerful and delightful way. This is an example of the font gallery or the color gallery. And it's built to scale if you decide to. Or if user asks to, of course. Let's talk about images. Another example of context awareness. Uh, we've, set a few, our, we've set a few videos short clips to illustrate better uh, the way we're approaching stuff. I hope it will help me explain to you what we're trying to do. So let's say this example is, is, is me sitting in a, in, a, in a meeting that uh, I want to take notes, that I took note. And I will also take, take a picture of the, of the whiteboard, summarize what happened. Now I, I misspelled keynote with a capital N. Excuse me. That. So I'm creating a new document, maybe setting a title. <coughs> I 
want to insert an image. I want to take the picture of the whiteboard. See the doc, the camera is within the document. I am keeping with the context as I go along. I can see the final result as I'm taking the image. And of course, you can also take a picture from your albums or whatnot. Now let's talk a little about uh, gestures. How can we move faster? And I noted before, when I said before about fast, about talk, people complain about lag. This is a different fast. This is how we can help users do stuff better. If we just save 10 seconds per document that users, in, while users is viewing or editing the document, and when I noted before, there were 80 million documents. That's 800 million seconds. That's 25 years. That's a lot. Tables. Tables is very interesting. It's close to my heart. When I create a table, or when you create a table, any, any mobile editor, why do we always get a 3x3 three three table? Do we all have the same need? When you create a table, you roughly know what you're trying to build. You roughly know the structure of the table you're trying to create. So when we start to, tack how to think how we can tackle uh, this problem, we first have to accept that different people have different desires. And how we can do this in one swipe. So in this example, I'm going to say that I'm going to insert, I'm replacing an image with a table. And with my finger, I exactly decide how many rows, how many, see how the top text also will flow around the table. Was it too fast? Should I show it again? Was it okay? Okay? Okay, great. Thank you for the back. Zooming and sharp, sharp visibility. That's that's also nice. I don't know if I've had any of you have, uh, have an experience playing with Microsoft Office or Pages or Google on an iPad. It is very hard to zoom. It doesn't stay that way. It's terrible. So we want to offer quality, sharp, and clear zooming, and but not just that. So I can zoom really out and it's very sharp video, very sharp video, sorry, very sharp quality. And when you zoom back in into fit, of course we're offering little snaps to, to help and guide users to their view. So this is auto fit, you can see it snap back. But if I want to go to a page view, you can also do this. What about when you want an overview of your documents? You want to see all, all the pages in one go, or maybe even navigate faster throughout your document. So I'm going to pinch in. Now I can see all the pages in my document. I can create a new page in one tap. And of course the keyboard came up automatically because that's what I want to do. I want to create a page. When I zoom back out, once again I see it. Overview of the document, and I can navigate back, back to the first page. Fast, 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 fast. Well, actually, in doing this presentation, I thought maybe well, why not to share uh, the thinking process, how the design team is thinking throughout to, to build new features, how to improve the experience. This is an example. of us investigating how we can treat text as a graphical object. What you're going to see here are not text boxes, it's the text string. And I'm going to triple tap a paragraph to select it, move it around, and paragraph now can reflow around the text. Another concept idea we're talking about is, is also helping people, and this is part of the 
one of our goals to help people create beautiful documents. How can we help people lay out their documents better? Uh, I didn't have an example before, by the way, but of course when you move an image, everything reflows around, everything snaps to, to where it should be. But what about text? How can I lay out? How can I help users? How can we, how can the design team help users uh, do stuff they don't necessarily know how to? Like, I personally don't know how to create column formation in the document. It's pretty complex. I need to go into the setting, open this menu, this menu, that menu. Why shouldn't I grab a paragraph and put, next to, put it next to a different paragraph? Why shouldn't this happen? And when I don't want it, I can simply drag it out and get it cleared. The last pillar uh, that helps us is also always remembering what, what brought us here, what are we trying to do. This brings us back to the beginning of, of our talk of the three things that people liked at Cloud Mom. And always remembering how we can follow the same principles and provide the same value. First of all, keep it free. Uh, we believe that personal productivity, there shouldn't be any charge for people to complete their own tasks. And we will always offer a freemium model as we have until now. Keep it open. For we believe that if the documents are yours or the users, to decide where to store them and how to manage them. An open environment where you are bringing your own documents. And this is a big one. Be free of any proprietary formats. There shouldn't be any more need to import and export your documents just because you're using one tool or another tool. Together with the LibreOffice community, we have built a remarkable compatible editor. This is also a lot of thanks to you guys. And finally, addressing what the user asks us. A fast and free lag experience. A clear and clean interface. Gestures to work as expected. We can now offer offline with a native editor. For, well, like we talked before, the images, people have a lot of photos on their device. And this is one of the asked, most asked feature we have, we've heard from our users. We have a better airplane, and that this, this goes on. This covers the three pillars that guide us uh, throughout, throughout our work. All to create a fast editor. And always to keep it in mind that everything we're trying to build is for a magic and fun experience. And where we are today. Six months ago, we started the new editor in a beta mode. We opened it for four countries. And for each version, for each improvement, we're increasing the audience. Today, it is open already in 38 countries. Um, you can al already see retention is better, more users are coming back and use the tool compared to our old one. Usage for opening documents, for reading and writing, is 5x better. The amount of action per document has tripled itself. More than 160,000 documents were already changed during with this area, just in the better countries. And in, in October, I guess that's the first time we announced it, um, in one month, this new editor will be available world, worldwide. Now, the way it works right now, we let users to choose which editor. Both editors are available to them. To, to work, to play, 
choose your own word. What is great to see that 90% of the users who switch to the new editor are continuing using it. We have a 10% drop off, which is pretty aligned with the 90-10% for those users who's looking for that specific feature of the So from October, uh, this editor will now be available in the US, UK, Canada, our biggest market. Because we were waiting a bit for the for the editor to be stable enough, to be good enough. And it's pretty cool. I don't know if you guys, any of you ever played with it or tried it. We're all encouraged to use it. Uh, I think for the app, it's already open in Europe, most of Europe. And from the next version, in a few weeks, we're going to have off, complete offline as well. So that's, that's exciting for us. I'm excited. So next steps. <coughs> so we do hope, we, we are hoping, that the LibreOffice community will join us in this quest to the mobile land. Uh, there is much more work to do. We're working very hard to continue improving this tool. And we are still have a lot of go. There's still missing features we haven't there's not implemented yet or integrated yet. And the level of, it, of experience is not where we want it to be yet. But it's better. It is it's it is it is better. And so we can, we can do this so we can help people power up their documents, to help them create beautiful documents. And now for a deeper dive on the compatibility, interoperability, the engine work, um, please visit Adam and Dil from the Cloudon team. They're here to, today and they're talking this week. Very interesting talks. I welcome you all to visit them. And that's it, basically. So thank you very much for listening to me. It's a pleasure to be here in this conference. Maybe you have questions? Yeah, sure, we can do questions. Yeah, I love your statistic. We said that 9 out of 10 people have no choice to choose LibreOffice over Microsoft. Well, <laughs> that's one interpretation. No, so there, you can be... You can choose how aggressive you want to be with uh, forcing people to opt into the new editor. Now we've chosen not to be that aggressive. We gave the users the choice. You get a nice dialogue, you may choose to opt in or opt out. Uh, we even have this ugly, nasty toolbar if you try to open the, the document in Microsoft Office, asking you to move to a snapper, faster, clear editor. Now from those who switch, nine of them keep using or keep using it. Answer your question. What would you switch? From these countries, uh, trying to remember, I had this clutter with numbers last year. I think we're standing on between 40 to 50 percent switch. I might be wrong. I can figure it out. But that's what I remember right now. May I remember right? I think it's about. Yeah. More questions? No? Good. Everything was clear? Yeah. Uh, how did you handle the uh, people who think uh, giving one star is uh, make their comments at the top comments? Uh, pr uh, most of them is <laughs> my uh, from my country, I actually. <laughs> giving one star. Yeah, we have a lot of one star. Uh, but the one star we're getting is because of for example, the first version that was out there didn't have print. So, you know, looking at those numbers, people opt back because they wanted to print. So it doesn't say anything about the new tool, it just say that feature wasn't there. Most of our one star are regarding offline. It's very clear, that cut is very clear. Everyone wants offline. Uh, I was asking uh, especially about uh People says it gives one star, and yeah. at the comments he says uh, program it works perfectly. It's uh, it uh, works uh, my uh, it does my work perfectly. 
But get you one star because I want my comment at the top comment. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I can answer how Apple is doing the star rating. So. Uh, okay. <laughs> at the Android side, you can uh, see a lot of these kind of people. <laughs> yeah. You should be aware of them. <laughs> well, it's not a bad thing, people. Even if they're saying one star, they're saying something. If for us, it's you know, it's not the greatest news in the world, but it's it's great that people are care enough to write a comment. You know, there's 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 a nice, terrible funnel from people who are using the to the product to the one percent that actually tell you that he's using the product, and actually to give a feedback for the good or for the bad. That's still good. If we miss something, if there's something goes wrong, if there's a bug, the faster we know about it, the better. And, and one other note, for, for people who put one star for request a feature, we can also, that helps us to prioritize what, what should we invest in new features, should we invest to improve a current feature, to help us to build a roadmap and prioritize for the upcoming versions. Anything else? Awesome. Thank you so much.